Hi guys and welcome to what will hopefully be a very calming painting video. This is part two of the Little Mermaid inspired piece. Last week I made a video where I planned, sketched and inked it and today I'm getting out the watercolours. Basically this did not go according to plan at the beginning. The first brush stroke I put down with my paint and my Water. You can see here in a moment on the top of her cheek these dark blotches beginning to form. <laughs> this is unusual and not good. You can listen here for my live reaction. Oh no. Not happy. <laughs> um, if you've used watercolors a lot like I have, you probably recognize these patches. It's almost like the paper is like, damaged and fibrous and, and blues and these dark splotches. Um, it, it only really happens for me though. I've used watercolor for years and years and it happens at the end of a painting sometimes when I've just put too many layers down and the paper can't really take any more. But to have it happen, like literally with my first brush stroke is very unusual it actually only ever happened to me one other time and that was the last painting i did like a couple weeks ago and now this painting now a couple things it could be my paper although i have thought of that but i've used this brand of paper for years and years and i've never had problems with it i've used this particular pad of paper that i'm pulling this sheet from before and it's been fine it could also be the fact that I drew directly on my paper and used my eraser a bit damaging the paper but I have done that I do that all the time I've done it I've erased a lot more than I have here and it's never really damaged it and if it ever did affect you know my paper's ability to take more paint and more layers certainly never to this extreme where I put one brush stroke down and I can see how damaged the paper is Anyway, before I move on and just you know, get on with the painting, I will say if, if anyone knows any tips or what this might be caused by, let me know. I might try and do some troubleshooting or think on it longer. So my thoughts at this point of the painting were, this is not good, I'll probably have to restart, but let's just persevere and see if we can fix it. 9 out of 10 times, I'll just keep pushing through a painting and I can get it to a, a point that I'm really happy with it. And if there are small areas that I really don't like, I can always edit them digitally before I make prints and such. Going into a lot of paintings, I don't really have too much planned for colours. I often have like a, a vague idea or just the, the gist of it in my mind and I'll just experiment as I go. But for this painting, I try to be a bit more purposeful. There are pretty much three main elements to this painting. The mermaid in the centre, the flowers around her, and the fish swirling around the edge. So I wanted to make sure that I highlight those areas and their differences with my colour and my tone separation. The fish around the edge were going to be, in my mind, the darkest area so that I have that feeling of like being cocooned in this dark swirl of fish and she's kind of safe down in the middle and the mermaid I wanted to be the brightest area so that she stands out the most and your eye is drawn to her and the flowers would be separated from the fish and the mermaid by their color which was supposed to be red in the book the thing is that red is actually the first color to disappear underwater and this is a long way down so really it wouldn't be red at all but this is fantasy so I can make it red if I want um, I decided to go with this sort of pink color as a middle ground so that it looked like a redder tone compared to everything else but still gave the whole painting a harmonious color palette like it was all underwater and soft all together I try to block in all my base colors right at the beginning um, it makes the painting a little less daunting for me when there are still areas that are quite white I don't really know where to go from there and when everything is just the color that it's kind of going to be in the end like a very soft diluted version obviously I can 
step back and look at the painting and go, okay, which areas need to be darker now? And which do I need to keep white? I don't know if you get this if you paint and traditionally or digitally with watercolour, whatever, but I get this specifically with watercolour where there's a point in the painting that I like can see the light and I suddenly like, it's going to work. Or <laughs> now it's looking better. Like I think I, I can see it. It's, it's in my mind, it's as good as finished at that point. And when I started to block in these darker colours in the tail, for me, I had that moment of like, okay, we've got this now, we can do it. I always try and get my characters to look as close to the description as I can. For this one, she's based off of the original Little Mermaid character, so I'll try and find the parts where it describes her appearance and her mood for this section so that it makes a bit more sense in context. Her skin was as clear and opalescent as a rose petal and her eyes as blue as the deepest sea. She had always been quiet and thoughtful, but now she became more so than ever. Her sisters asked her what she had seen on her first visit up there, but she would not tell them anything. Her only consolation was to sit in her little garden and cast her arms around the beautiful marble statue which resembled the prince. But she neglected her flowers, which grew as if in a wilderness, trailing over the paths and twining their long stems and leaves in and out of the branches of the trees. Certainly, those humans could never imagine that a lovely little mermaid was below them, stretching her white hands up towards the keel of their ship. She peeped out from among the green rushes, and if the wind caught in her long silvery white veil, anyone who saw it thought it was a swan that was spreading out its wings. So from all those little moments in the book where her appearance is described I kind of took it that she was um, kind of almost translucent and silvery and pale it doesn't really describe her tail um, as far as I could tell so I just kind of made that up I like the idea of it being very blue and um, watery and it was very important for me to try and capture that feeling of her just lying in her garden almost wasting away with sadness Wherever I can possibly create separation of important elements with contrast, I try and do it without making it look ridiculous. So particularly the figure with the mermaid's hair being almost this white colour, I try and put the colours directly behind the hair or in these little loops where the hair is wrapping around, all these little areas I try and make them very dark so that the hair will really pop. And, you know, for example, her tail, I try and make the flowers next to her tail lighter so that her tail is darker than them, so that there's always contrast for the important elements. The fish right around the rim closest to the mermaid, I tried to make them very dark so that they stood out against the pale background behind them. I was at a point here where I was quite happy with how the painting was going, but I had to do some like darker areas and stuff and, and go a bit heavier with the watercolour so this is usually when I get my iPad out and take a picture of it and experiment a little with the colours just to make sure we know what we're doing and we don't ruin it. Making the flowers brighter here, more pinky red in colour and I'm just mixing up some blue here to add around the fish in the background kind of area. So I've drawn and painted a lot of fairies, a lot of mermaids, I've been doing traditional art and specifically watercolours for many years but I haven't done a whole lot of backgrounds so this is reasonably new to me. Last year I started drawing fairies and giving them backgrounds and this year I hope to continue. This is 
I think one of my first like mermaid background pieces with watercolour. All in all, especially with the messed up paper I had at the start, I'm really proud of this piece and happy that I stuck at it. I think one of the reasons that I didn't find it too daunting was because from the beginning I've tried to keep it simple in its composition and separate the elements so that I could manage it more easily. If you've been using watercolours yourself for a while, I'm sure you also know that it's really all about patience and just persevering even when it doesn't look very good. For me, they almost always come together and often it's right near the end where I'll put like a dark area behind somewhere and it brings forward the other part or I'll add another layer on this area or there and just you know these small little things can make a big difference and suddenly it'll go from an artwork that I was like oh yeah it's okay not really sure to like my new favorite piece I love 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 the original illustrations by Edmund it's either Dulac or Duloc um they're so beautiful especially this one where the little mermaid finding and rescuing the prince and holding his head above the waves in the storm it's the kind of art that inspires me to keep painting but also makes me want to throw my brushes down and leave because I feel like I'll never get that level of the feeling that I want to get across that's why we keep painting and practicing so one day I can paint things like that. I read this book in the last couple weeks on my Kindle. I bought it for I think it was like two or three dollars um, because I wanted to see if I like it first and now that I know I love it I've got to get myself a nice copy with all the original illustrations. I don't really know if I'll be able to find an old version of this book. I know some some certain books, the, the old ones are just very, you know, rare and expensive, so I might just have to settle for getting a modern one, but I'll probably just be patient and keep an eye out in the next couple of years. follow my technique I have no technique I would like to learn how to use colored pencils properly with the whole layering stuff and everything but as it is I add them sometimes and I personally think it looks nice so yeah and with that the painting is complete I really hope you like it I really like it it actually surprisingly turned out quite similar to how I was envisioning it when I planned it and read the book. And I'm really happy with the purple ink I used instead of the black for the lines. I think it looks a lot less harsh than the black would have looked and suits the purple colour palette. So of course I decided to make prints of this artwork. If you click the link in the description of this video, it should take you to my Etsy shop where you can get your own. This is the A4 size. I really like it. It's very big and you can see all the details nicely. But you can also get this smaller A5 version if you would like. Thanks so much for coming along on this video and watching me paint this mermaid. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your week.